Hey there, once again, ladies and gentlemen, guys and girls, and all motorsports fans alike. We are back here at Daytona International Speedway in Daytona Beach, Florida, to kick off Season 2 of the Speed Racing Series. We're definitely glad you can join the ride with us and observe what's going to happen this upcoming season. Last season ended on an accomplishing note in my book as Luke Martin won the title in thrilling fashion over Charles Sanford at Atlanta in that season's finale. But today, 45 cars are shown up to try and qualify for next week's main event. Only 42 maximum can start. And I'll explain how this is all going to go in a little bit as here comes rookie driver Shade Eves to begin his qualifying time. The Mississippi driver driving the 83 Nova Sport Ford Fusion. But 24 of the cars have already locked themselves into next week's race via last season's owner points, and Shade Eves is one of them. While the other 21 drivers are not locked in, they're listed as go-or-go-home drivers. But this poll day session, uh, the order was determined via random draw, and Eves was the first guinea pig to run first. But the top 12 go-or-go-home drivers will be locked in on speed today, and then on Thursday we'll run twin 40-lap dual races to fill up the other six spots, and then next week's 100-lap main event to determine who will be our first round winner. And Eves puts up a 46.696 for the first overall time in this Q session. So that is going to be the bar that everyone's going to try and beat. Going out second in the qualifying draw, here's Western New York driver Jesse Turner in his number 94 U.S. Air Force Ford Fusion. He clocks in with a 47.458 for lap number one. But this 94 Lake Effect Autosport team, they had a bit of a roller coaster season in season one, beginning with that Charlotte incident where Turner blew his engine while he was leading, skipping out Richmond due to not having a backup car prepared for him. But in the races going forward, he's rebounded pretty well, getting three top 10 finishes and finishing 21st in points. So Lake Effect Autosport, they got a little bit of a chip on their shoulder and they want to do better this time around for season two. As Turner's second lap will be a 47.023. So he's not faster than Eves, but Turner going out second, sits in second for now. Here's the second rookie driver to take a time today. It is Anthony McClure, the Florida driver, driving the number seven Rain Energy Dodge for Monster Motorsports. He gets a 47.427 on lap number one, but McClure... And also Eves, they make up one of the 21 Rookie of the Year contenders for this season. As, I mean, not only did we have an overall field expansion, we had an overall rookie expansion. So we will have a competitive bunch going for that Rookie of the Year award this season. As McClure's team of Monster Motorsports has expanded to three full-time cars. But McClure is one of the locked-in entries as Diego Yepes, who will be going out later today. He is the only... Go or go home driver out of the monster team. So how will McClure do on lap two? A 47.024. That's just a thousandth of a second behind Turner. As McClure goes out third and clocks in third with his time. Coming across the line to begin his time. Here's your defending Daytona winner, ladies and gentlemen. It's the 87 of Lane Sanders. And that Domino's Pizza Ford Fusion for Sanders Performance Auto Racing. And he put up a quick first lap with a 46.759. Jade Eves has a 46.696. So Sanders looking on pace already to take that top spot from him. But going along with that Daytona win, Sanders had a pretty good overall season one with three top fives, six top tens, and getting seventh in the points. As he outdueled Zachary DeLalo, Charles Sanford, and TJ Smith in a classic finished to remember one season ago as he goes across the line for lap two and he will take the top spot with a 46 302 so the 87 of sanders looking quick once again here at daytona zachary fitzwater begins his lap as the fifth driver to take time today the well-liked australian driver puts up a 47 099 for lap one Fitzwater undergoing a number change 
this season, carrying the number 59. He was 86 a season ago, but he's still got Marina Fox Foundation to sponsor him for this race. Fitzwater had a slower start to season one, but eventually picked up his pace a little bit. He got two top 10 finishes and finished 14th in points. So Fitzwater and the Nova Sport team also looking to gain more ground this season. Just wonder how much he's going to compare to his teammate of Eves, but we're going to find out right here. A 46-637, so he is going to go faster than Eves, but not fastest overall, but Fitzwater slides into second with that time there. The first five cars you saw are already locked into next week's show, but right here is the first of the Go or Go Home drivers to participate in this session. Here's Grantley Kang out of Barbados, driving the number 57 Beaver Buzz Energy Chevy for brand new team Southern Lightning Automotive. His first lap is a 48.052. He'll have his teammate Brian Grigsby take a time later today in the number 75 car. But with brand new teams coming into the series, uh, some you may not expect to be the fastest right out of the gate. But nonetheless, they are getting track time. They're here. They're willing to race. So props to all the new drivers and teams showing up to do that. As King's second lap of 47.613, that is slowest overall. But for the go-go-home drivers, that's the mark that they got to shoot for. Beginning lap number two on the track is Nova Sport team captain Aiden Smith. In his number 68 Ford Fusion, with his first lap being a 47 triple one for that Cummins car. Smith is the third and final Nova Sport car to be on the track, with Fitzwater and Eves already posting laps. Smith finished fifth here one season ago and carried that momentum pretty well, I'd say, getting three top fives, six top tens, and a pole at Rockingham, may, may I add. Finishing 10th in points, so Smith hoping to, hoping to at least replicate that this season. But let's see how he does compared to his two teammates. This will wrap up all the Nova Sport cars taking time today. A 46.692. And I believe that's just four thousandths of a second ahead of Shade Eve. So Smith right in the middle of the sandwich between the three Nova Sport cars. Going across the line now is the first out of the four S3 Motorsports Chevys. It's the 03 of Ryan Dagby out of New Jersey. Getting a 46.729 for lap number one, which I believe was slightly faster than Lane Sanders' first lap. So Dagby in that Dollar General Chevy. Looking to beat Sanders out for pole for now. Dagby scored two top fives, including a third place finish in the uh, season finale at Atlanta. Four top tens and finishing 15th in points. So there's definitely room for improvement with that 03 team. But zooming to the line, how will he do compared to Sanders' time? A 46 285 that beats it out by a tenth and a half. So Dagby in the 03 car now goes to P1. Here comes rookie driver Shantley Daniel onto the racetrack. Another new driver, another new team. The South Carolina driver of Daniel driving for ARC Racing in their first SRS endeavor. And that number 10 Sphinx Dodge Charger. A 48-019. Probably going to be around pace as that 57 of King. But Daniel is another one of those go or go home participants. And there's definitely plenty of them. Reminder, we're taking the top 12 out of this poll session. So then when the uh, twin duels come around, they'll just have to race each other for uh, whoever can start the highest. But here comes Shantley Daniel. Definitely not going to be contending for the poll, but let's see how he does. A 47-537. And that will be good enough for 8th on time, just beating out Grantley King for that position. Second out for the S3 Motorsports team, he's rookie driver Austin Montgomery, the Texan, getting a 46-640 for his first lap. His teammate, 
of Dagby. Right now, fastest overall. Montgomery's the 10th car out. The third go or go home driver to get out here. He definitely looks on pace to, well, he just beat Chantley Daniel and Grantley King on his first lap, so he's just got nowhere to go but up from here. But Montgomery looking pretty quick in that UPS Chevy Impala. UPS formerly a sponsor, Charles Sanford, but they moved over to Austin Montgomery's team for this season. At the line, Montgomery's time will be a 46-206, and he does beat out Ryan Dagby. So put the rookie driver up top in car number 35. Here's a driver in a team that you may instantly recognize from last season. The 12 of Harrison Riley on the track right now in his Aaron's Toyota Camry for pole position racing. The first Toyota driver to lay down a lap here at Daytona. Lap one is a 46-8-17. Riley's two teammates of Zachary Bilson and Zachary DeLello to come later on in this session today. Riley had a lot of accomplishments in season one, getting a fourth place points finish with one win out at Road America, five top fives and eight top tens to his name. So he's looking to replicate that same success. Second lap for Harrison Riley, a 46-379. And that is going to put him fourth in between Lane Sanders and Zachary Fitzwater. Out on the racetrack right now in the 07 Dodge Charger, it's Chicago boy Dylan Young for Monster Motorsports. He's got a 47-485 for his first lap. Because it'll be a brand new team for Dylan Young this season. In season one, he competed for his own family team of Young Motorsports in the number two car, but it was a letdown to say the least. He never really found the, the right amount of footing that he needed to. He only got a best finish of 15th twice and finished 23rd in the standings. So perhaps with a new team and a new environment surrounding him, hopefully that can be a source of motivation for all involved in this 07 team. So across the line, Dylan Young will get a 47.092. And that's going to put him just behind his teammate, Anthony McClure in the 10th position. Joseph Strigley Racing gets one of their cars on the track for the first time today, and it's in the form of rookie Brandon Mayhew. The Alabama driver gets a 46.979 for his lap one. And that Exxon Mobil One Chevy Impala, that's right, Joseph Strigley Racing. They used to have Dodges last season, but they have switched to Chevy in order to keep uh, Charles Sanford amongst the team. That was the deal they made. So JSR now having Chevy and Palas in their stable. For Brandon Mayhew, he is locked into the show. This used to be Joseph Strigley's 61 car from a season ago. And being from Alabama, his hometown track is Talladega, which will be our 15th race of the season. So he's used to super speedway racing, and this is where he's going to debut this season. And he will post a 46-559 for Brandon Mayhew, and that will put him in fifth. Just ahead of Zachary Fitzwater. Hailing from the state of Tennessee, here comes the 75 of Brian Grigsby. Putting his Jack Daniels Chevy Impala on the track. He's got a 47-744 for his first lap. Pretty fitting, a, a Tennessee company sponsoring a Tennessee driver on a Tennessee team. That's uh, quite the trifecta. But Grigsby, he's got his teammate of Grantley King. Right now, the slowest overall driver with a 47.613, so Grigsby realistically just needs to pick up only um, three tenths in order to beat him. But of course, with him being a go or go home driver, he's got to pick up all the speed that he can coming into the line because every position matters in go or go home qualifying. So Grigsby will get a 47.284. He will be faster than the 57 of King. And that time is going to put him 10th overall. Second driver to post a time for Toyota today. It's rookie driver Lee Smith in the 04 Toyota Camry for the Eclipse Group. Another new driver and another new team looking to make their mark in the SRS. First lap is a 47.652. But Smith, the South Carolina driver. Uh, South Carolina's got a 
good bunch of drivers on the grid for this season. We saw Shantley Daniel make a lap earlier. He's also a South Carolina native. But Smith, another go or go home driver. So we're not bumping out anyone just yet, but later in the session, we're definitely going to have to, but we'll see what time Smith can put up. And it's going to be a 47-215 for Lee Smith. And that'll put him in 12th ahead of the 75 of Brian Grigsby. So not a bad showing for the Eclipse group. Driver number two out of the Spa Racing Stable. Here's the 84 of Major Robinson, another Rookie of the Year contender. In that Advent Health Ford Fusion, getting a 46-714 for lap one. Pretty nice looking 84 car. That blue, white, and green color combo. But Robinson, like his cousin Lane Sanders, from the state of Alabama. So he's been going to Talladega a long time watching Super Speedway Racing. But after seeing Lane Sanders take the checkered flag here a season ago, he's like, I want to give this a try. So he's got a ride with that team right now. Sanders in third with a, with a 46-302. Let's see what time Robinson can compare to. And it's not going to be enough to beat Lane Sanders. It's a 46-329, but the rookie driver will slot into the fourth spot on the timesheet for now. On track, looking to make their debut as a team and a driver, it's Memphis Fisher in the 62 Chevy Impala for Metallic Motorsports in that Sandvik scheme. He's got a 48-178 as his first lap, so don't think he'll be quite that high on the speed charts when he gets back around to the line. But Fisher hailing from Washington State and Metallic Motorsports shop setting up in California. So that's how they're running things. But Fisher still hoping to uh, make his initial presence known and just be able to at least get the chance to run and make the show. That's the main goal for most of these go or go home teams. But to the stripe he comes. Memphis Fisher will get a 47-747. Now that's pretty consistent number lineup. But on the speed chart, that will be the slowest overall. So out of 17 cars, Memphis Fisher is slowest. Across the line goes another rookie driver in a locked-in ride. It's DJ Curtis out of Kansas City, Missouri. Driving the number 99 Camping World Dodge Charger for Starcom Enterprises. He's got a 47.564 for lap one, is DJ Curtis. This 99 car being driven by Kyle Collins in season one. And Collins got a moderate amount of success in that car, so Curtis, he'll have the shot to compete for top tens from time to time this season. But on a super speedway track like this, you know he'll have to rely heavily on the draft to surge his way forward and Finish even higher than that. Maybe contend for a win. For lap two, DJ Curtis will get a 47-137. And that will put him in 13th and behind Dylan Young. So that's where DJ Curtis is in the 99. The 14 of Alexander Rowe is next up on the qualifying order. And the number 14, Ahern Rentals Dodge for Arc Racing. Rowe. The Daytona Beach, Florida native, he grew up just down the road from this place. He's got a 47-370 for his first lap. But should he make next week's feature, it will be his SRS debut, and uh, it'll be special to him considering that this is his home turf. So he'd love to get that done. He's got the same equipment. And chassis is Shantley Daniel, so we'll just have to see how much better he'll do this lap compared to his teammate. And right there, a 46-954 for Alexander Rowe. That'll be good enough to get him into 10th ahead of Jesse Turner. So uh, not a bad job by Alexander Rowe putting that ARC racing car in the top 10. Starting his second lap, here comes South Carolina's own Glenn Mixon. In that number 43, Dickies Ford Fusion for Lake Effect Autosport. Lap one for him is a 47-542. And 
in that Dickies machine. Mixon getting into the game later in the going last season. He debuted out at Michigan and ran every race forward, but this 43 team, it is locked in. It ran nine out of the 12 races a season ago, but Mixon, last time he was in an SRS race, he got a 10th place finish at Atlanta. So that's a little good boost of good momentum for Mixon. But how will he fare to his teammate Jesse Turner in 11th with a 47 2 3 And it's going to be a 47 one That's actually just one thousandth of a second faster than DJ Curtis. And that will put Mixon 14th. Here on the track now is Japanese standout Yoshiko Sakamoto. In a brand new ride for Joseph Strigley Racing in the 66 Ryder Chevy Impala. Last season for this race, she sat on the front row. But right now she's got a 46-7-9-8. Her teammate Brandon Mayhew already ran earlier. And he's six on the time chart so far. But Sakamoto, this is the go-or-go-home entry for JSR. So Sakamoto will need to hurry back to the line as quick as she can here. But Sakamoto had a pretty decent season in the 71 Shell United Motors car. She did roll over at Charlotte, but she finished ninth in the points with three top fives and seven top tens. So she'll look to be a strong contender again. Lap two for her is a 46-401 for Sakamoto in the 66. And that will put her in sixth, just ahead of her teammate Brandon Mayhew. So those two JSR cars running pretty identical. 22 cars in, and now we get to see the first Martin Motorsports car show up today. Here's Lucas Catano in the number 20 Bass Pro Shops car, the sponsor that he loyally held all last season. He's got a 46.575 for his first lap, and that's a top 10 lap right there, right away. But Catano, the Virginia driver, a two-time winner last season out at Charlotte and at Michigan. For the Martin team's home race. But those two wins, four top fives and six top tens, earned him a seventh place points finish last season in a tie with Lane Sanders. So Catano, going to be another heavy hitter, not just for this qualifying session, but for the rest of the season after Daytona. How will he fare here? A 46-125. We got a new fastest driver in town. And he does beat Austin Montgomery. On the timesheet, so give position number one to Lucas Catano. With that blistering lap by Lucas Catano, that marks the halfway point in this pole day session. 22 cars down, 23 remain. On the track right now is the number 70 of series newcomer Justin Henley in his own Henley Bemidji Racing Ford Fusion. Being sponsored by his home university of Bemidji State University up in Minnesota. Henley with a 47-667 for his first lap. Another go-or-go-home driver. So we are getting closer to the point where we are going to have to start bumping some of these guys out. So Henley hopes to avoid being in that situation. It's not an easy track coming all the way from Minnesota to Florida, but he made it happen. So can he make it happen on pole day? A 47-255. And that'll put him in between Lee Smith and Brian Griggs being 19th. Making his way out of the track now is a season one veteran aboard a new team for this season. It's RJ Bishop, the Arizona driver, hopping into the number 38. Good Sam Ford Fusion for Rambler Racing. The team expanding from just one to four full-time cars for season two. RJ Bishop being one of them. He's got a 46-7-14, so right away he's already in a good position to just qualify his way into next week's race here at Daytona. Vince Freeze in the 21, who will qualify later. He's the only locked-in driver for that team. But Bishop looking pretty good. He may solidify a top-10 lap, but we'll have to find out for sure. RJ Bishop gets a 46-3-0-3. That is just a hair behind Lane Sanders, who has a 46-302. So Bishop, he'll split up Sanders and Major Robinson and put himself in fifth place. Another Martin Motorsports driver looking to duplicate the run that the 20 had 
is rookie driver Noah Hart, hailing from Georgia, and that number 18 JBL Ford Fusion for the Martin team. Although his first lap doesn't look to be as hot as Catano's was with a 46.802. But Noah Hart, uh, the Martin team, they've got a lot of belief in this kid. And uh, they, they see his potential, and they put him in this number 18 to pace his way into next week's race. He is the 12th go-go-home driver to take a time here, so after this run, we will have to start eliminating some of these drivers, forcing them into racing their way into next week's race via the duels. But Noah Hart, he'll clock in at a 46-390, putting him at 8th place between Harrison Riley and Yoshiko Sakamoto. So, good performance by Noah Hart in this number 18. Coming to the line in a fresh, amplified look on his car this season, it's Nick Breeding in the double zero Permatex Dodge for Starcom Enterprises. That's right, the Starcom Enterprises team, they drove Chevys a season ago, but now they made the switch to Dodge. So they're going to drive Chargers this season here. Breeding's first lap is a 47-424. And he'll be teammates to DJ Curtis, the rookie contender in the 99. Breeding start to season one was a little rockier than most, but he eventually got the hang of things. Uh, he got a season best finish of 11th at Road America. So a top 10 is very much on the horizon for the Virginian. And he'll clock in with a 47 And he's going to clock in with a 47.013. So on the time charts, that will put him 15th behind Alexander Rowe. So that's where Nick Breeding is going to put his Permatex car at. Here's another new driver and team looking to make their first ever start in the SRS. Hailing from the state of Kansas, it's Sabre Fox with Furry Row Motorsports and the number 34 Dude Wipes Chevy Impala. A 47-811 for lap number one for Sabre Fox. The 13th go-a-go home driver to take a time in this session. So drivers like Memphis Fisher, Grantley King, Shantley Daniel, Brian Grigsby, those guys, uh, I'd be starting to get a little bit nervous because you never know when the next driver is going to eliminate you or keep you safe. So we'll just see how Sabre performs right here in the 34. To the line, it'll be a 47-354 for Sabre Fox, the Kansas driver. And that's going to slot that number 34 car into the 24th position between the 75 and the 10. And unfortunately for Memphis Fisher in the 62, that means he has been knocked out of pole qualifying. And his fate will lie in the Thursday duels. The go or go home drivers just keep on coming. Here comes rookie contender Cam Cole on the track here in his number 78 Ford Fusion for CC Orange Racing. Both driver and team hailing from California. Being sponsored by Stanford University for this season. That's a pretty prestigious place to be sponsored by, so add a boy to Cam Cole for getting that accomplished. He has deep California roots. And lap one already for Cole is a 47-269, which is going to lock out Grantley King in the 57. So King will need to race his way into the main event via Thursday's duels. But can Cam Cole improve his position? We'll just have to see. 191 at the line. A 46-885 for the 78 of Cam Cole. And that's going to place him ahead of Alexander Rowe in 14th and right behind the Nova Sport trio of Fitzwater, Smith, and Eves. So a good performance by the California native of Cam Cole. Shantley Daniel, I advise you start heading for your holler and getting ready for Thursday because here's Nick Pericles on the track in his number 31 AutoZone Ford Fusion for Rambler Racing. And as you see, he's already got a 46-541. So Shantley Daniel... In the 10 is now in a race your way in position for next week's big race. 
But Pericles, the rookie driver, hailing from the Miami area. So this is just a small hike up the road for him. He'll be joining Vince Freeze, R.J. Bishop, and Scott Roush on the Rambler team. And you know their Fords are looking to be fast. But how will he do compared to Lucas Catano? His first lap is similar to what he had. What can he do? A 46-138. That's second quickest overall for Nick Pericles, the rookie. And he's going to knock Austin Montgomery off that hot seat in the second position. So he and Catano is your front row for the time being. Currently on track is another driver and team that you may be familiar with from last season. It's Gatlin Downey. Yes, the Kentucky driver back in this number six great railing Chevy for Harmon Benning Peterson. Again, this team just trying to be the little guys that can in this series. They don't have that many employees at their shop. But they're just making do and doing the best they can to just have a good time and be a part of this whole experience with everybody in this series. But Downey finishing 22nd in the standings last year. And the highlight of his season being a 6th place finish out at Dover. And that was magnificent to see. But go go home drivers, not to worry because Downey is already locked into the race. Lap number 2 for Downey is a 47-619. So that's 2nd slowest overall. But not to worry for Downey and the 6th crew because they've already got comfort knowing that they will be able to race and they have the opportunity to do well like everyone else. This next competitor should be pretty fearsome to everyone competing here this weekend. Here's Zachary DeLello, the North Carolina driver. Back once again in this number 15 Dr. Pepper Toyota for pole position racing. Clicking off a 46, 767 for his first lap. But DeLello, he has just about the biggest thorn. <coughs> but DeLello has a major thorn in his side from a season ago when he lost out to Lane Sanders here in season one. Coming up just shy of victory. But the rest of the season beyond that went very well for DeLello. Grabbing a win at Chicagoland, a pole at Talladega too, and a sixth place points finish. Right now, DeLello's teammate of Harrison Riley is 8th, so how will that 15 do compared to him? A 46-331. So DeLello will jump ahead of Harrison Riley and will take over that 8th position from him. Approaching the line right now, in that very recognizable purple paint scheme, it's the Cometic Gasket Chevy Impala of Roberto Crown Jr. Driving this number 23 car for new team Fast Track Racing. Roberto Crown Jr. hailing from Connecticut, getting a 47-565 for his first lap. Fast Track Racing is only scheduled to field this 23 car for just eight races this season. They're not full-time yet, although if that opportunity ever arose, they could certainly pounce on it. They got Cometic Gaskets helping them out for their endeavors this season. But Sabre Fox is the next driver on the bubble, and it'll depend on how Crown Jr. does right here. Will he have a fast enough time to beat Sabre Fox? He will, a 47-165 for the 23 of Roberto Crown Jr. And Sabre Fox is the next driver knocked off the bubble and will have to depend on racing his way into the big race. Zooming to the line right here is the McDonald's car of Charles Sanford, the championship runner-up from last season. Hopping in a Chevy for Joseph Strigley Racing, still remaining with the same team, but of course driving a Chevy Impala this time. He has a 47.016 for his first lap, so it's not quite as hot as what his two teammates did of Mayhew and Sakamoto. Right now they're 11th and 12th currently. But Sanfer won four times last season, including three in a row, but just lost out on the championship to Luke Martin by four points. He got four wins, eight top fives, nine top tens, and three poles. So look for Sanford to do even more of that now that we've got four extra races on the calendar. But Sanford's second lap is a 46-622. 
So that time will put him in right behind his teammate of Brandon Mayhew in 13th. So the three JSR cars are all right together in those positions. Carrying new colors aboard his race car this season, it's Indiana driver James Ellison remaining in that number three Chevrolet for Crossroads Racing. Ellison in that three team returning to action this season with a slick blue and yellow look aboard that Wabash International Chevy Impala. First lap is a 47-427, but Ellison last season finished 11th in the points. And if not for crashes at Charlotte and Talladega and a blown engine at Road America, he very well could have finished higher in the standings. Uh, he did score a pull at Richmond, which was a good high moment for him. So Ellison looking to crack into that top 10 in points this time around. So how will Hoosier do on pole day? What time will he put up? A 46.995. That's right underneath the 47 second bracket. And that'll slide him into 19th in between Alexander Rowe and Nick Breeding. You can look for this driver to make the competition freeze in their tracks. On track right now is Vince Freeze out of New Jersey. Hopping into the number 21 Ford Fusion for Rambler Racing, the car that had plenty of success last season with TJ Hanley, who decided to step away from the series this season to pursue other activities. But Freeze is in a good ride. He's already got a 46-678 for lap one. His teammates of Pericles and Bishop right now second and sixth on the board. Freeze just has one start to his name that came in the finale at Atlanta last season where he finished eighth. So job well done to Vince Freeze. But let's see if he can, if he can put up a fight for the pole. Can he do it? No, a 46-258. For Vince Freeze, the rookie. And that'll put him in fourth place. He'll be separating the two S3 cars of Austin Montgomery and Ryan Dagby. Last season, it was this driver who became the inaugural pole sitter for the Speed Racing Series. And today, he looks to do it again. Representing Ontario, Canada is Joseph Srigley. In a new ride this season in the 06 Lucas Oil Chevy Impala for S3 Motorsports. And this is the second of the non-locked-in entries for that team. And as you see, the time he got on lap one is going to bump Brian Grigsby out of a locked-in spot on speed. So Srigley is in. And it should also be noted that Nick Pericles, Austin Montgomery, RJ Bishop, Major Robinson, Noah Hart, and Yoshiko Sakamoto, they are also safe on speed. But Srigley getting a 13th place points finish and was runner-up to Charles Sanford in the Atlanta finale. He'll have, hope to have a strong season two here. And he's not going to have enough for the pole. He won't make it back to back. A 46-356 for Srigley. And that will put him in between the two PPR teammates of Zachary Delello and Harrison Riley in 10th place. Make way, everybody, because the champion is back on track. From Michigan, it's Luke Martin, your defending season one champion for the Speed Racing Series. Remaining in his own number 54, Martin Motorsports Ford Fusion with M&Ms on the car for this race. A 46.832 though, so I don't know if he's going to be able to do as well as Kitano did. Kitano's really holding off the field very superbly in this qualifying session. But need I say more, Martin getting his first win out at Rockingham and being just being able to hold on to the championship over Charles Sanford, TJ Hanley, and Harrison Riley, who are also in contention. But Martin is back in business and looks to get another one. But he also wants to win here at Daytona, too. And he'll have to settle with a 46-449. So Martin is going to be in between Sakamoto and Mayhew, putting himself in 14th on the board. Another driver who's migrated to a new team and has himself a new home for Season 2 is Ryan Griffin, who's jumped ship over to Shell United Motors to drive their peak automotive number 71 Toyota Camry. Griffin does still stick with Toyota as he dr drove the previously now defunct Team Day Spring in Season 1. Griffin's got a 47-183 on his first lap. Griffin started off pretty well in the season, 
twice getting a career best result of third at Charlotte and Darlington. But unfortunately, back-to-back -back last place finishes from a blown engine at Dover to a crash at Watkins Glen, it hindered his points chase very badly. But he hopes to uh, forget about that and rebound for this coming season. And Griffin will clock in at a 46-729. And on the time charts, that will put him 20th behind the Nova Sport Trio as well as Cam Cole. So Griffin's going to lie there with a few cars to go. Working to put down a fast lap time for himself, here's Scott Roush on the track in the number 50 Ford Fusion for Rambler Racing, the fourth car out of that team qualifying here today. Sporting a new blue Summit scheme aboard that 50 car is Roush. A 46.932, so he's a bit off from where his teammates were putting up their first laps. But Roush finished 18th in the series standings last season, and he did score a top 10 finish at both super speedway races at Daytona and Talladega, where his home race lies. But Roush um, and his uh, number 50 Roush family racing team, they've merged with Rambler, so they're working out of the shop while Roush gets to keep his 50 crew. But on lap two, a 46-531 for Roush. A little bit lower than what he liked to have run, but he's going to slot in 15th right behind Luke Martin. Roaming around the high banks of Daytona is the third driver for the Sanders Performance Auto Racing Team, Christian Vargas in car number 81. And that Circuit City Ford Fusion that he's carrying as a sponsor. But Vargas uh, undergoing a number change just like uh, Fitzwater, RJ Bishop, and a few other guys are doing. Vargas got a 20th place points finish in Season 1, getting a career best result of 3rd at Talladega, which is also a super speedway race. He managed to sneak his way around the big one and was able to last till the end and get 3rd in that race. But here's Vargas. He's got a 46.802 as his first lap. Both Sanders and Robinson, his teammates, are in the top 10. What's he going to do? A 46.397 for the 81 of Christian Vargas that is going to be behind the 87 and the 84. And it looks like Vargas will land in the 13th position behind Noah Hart. But Vargas still has a car to contend, and we'll see how he can handle himself in the draft. Just five cars to go in this pole qualifying session. And it's going to begin with the driver of the number 17 Wix Filters Dodge Charger of Nathan Orman, the rookie driver hailing from California. Driving for his own Nathan Orman Motorsports team. But he's got a 47-8-12 right now. And the next go-home driver on the bubble is Justin Henley, who has a 47-255. So Orman has to beat that time to at least be over the bubble. But he still has Kyle Collins, Zachary Bilson, and Diego Yepes still left to run as go-or-go -go homers. But Orman looks pretty ambitious and hopes to at least be safe for the next few rounds. Coming to the strike. It'll be a 47-389 for Nathan Ormond in the 17 machine. And unfortunately, it will not be enough. That's going to line him up 37th in between Saber Fox and Shantley Daniel. So Ormond, he tried, but he just couldn't do it. And it looks like he will have to put his focus towards Thursday's events. If there's any hope for Martin Motorsports to completely seal up the front row, it all lies on the shoulders of this driver, Kyle Collins, hailing from Newfoundland, Canada, jumping into this new number 19 Coors Light machine. But he's got a 47.019 for lap number one, so he really needs to push the throttle through the floor if he wants to catch up to Catano's time. But Collins in this go or go home number 19, and with that time, it does officially shove Justin Henley outside the bubble. So Collins is in, and Lee Smith will be the newest driver on the bubble here. But Collins getting 16th in the points last season. Scoring a season-high finish of fourth at Road America. How will Collins do for lap two? A 46-569 for the Canadian driver. And that will only be good enough for 18th. 
splitting up the JSR teammates of Brandon Mayhew and Charles Sanfer. But Collins has speed, so we'll see how much he'll show of it on race day. 43rd car coming up to post a lap time today. Here's the 13 of Zachary Bilson, the Pennsylvanian. And hello, Bilson, a 46, 597 for his first lap. How about that for the number 13 Sherwin-Williams Toyota? I mean, I know his team name is Pole Position Racing, but I guess he's trying to take that as literally as possible. <laughs> he's really going for it. He pulled off a stunning second-place qualifying run for his uh, debut start at Talladega last season. He finished ninth out there and 22nd at Atlanta for his first two career starts. This will be his third as he has officially knocked out Lee Smith out of the go-or-go-home camp. But coming to the stripe, Kitano, Pericles, will he dethrone any of them? Yes, he will! A 46-122! He beats Lucas Kitano for the pole by just three thousandths of a second. Whoo! Talk about coming in clutch for Zachary Bilson. His crew's got to be elated and excited talking to him on the radio, and he'll have a very enjoyable cool-down lap coming into pit road. But with just two cars to go, I say his odds of becoming the pole sitter look to be very high. Here comes the final go-or-go-home driver to post a qualifying lap today. Diego Yepes, out of Venezuela, driving the number 77 RTIC Dodge for Monster Motorsports. He's got a 47.527 for his first lap. The target time for Yepes to beat a 47-165, which is held by the 23 of Roberto Crown Jr. And with Yepes being the last go-go homer here, that means Cam Cole and Alexander Rowe have made the show. So good job to those two guys. Yepes's teammates of Anthony McClure and, D and Dylan Young are 30th and 31st on the board, but those guys are locked in. Yepes isn't safe yet. But it'll all depend on what Yepes does in this final thousand yards. Is it going to be Yepes or is it going to be Roberto Crown Jr.? Will he get it done? Yes, a 47.075 for Diego Yepes. That will lock him into the show. And that time is actually going to put him in 31st in between his teammates of McClure and Young. But it doesn't matter. Yepes is in the show. And unfortunately for Roberto Crown Jr., while he may have put up a good fight to stay alive, he's going to have a huge load of work to do come Thursday for when we run these dual races. So without further delay, we've got one final driver to go. Let's get to him. Well, just like that, folks, we're down to our final driver of the day in this pole qualifying session. TJ Smith, the New Jersey driver, piloting the same number 24 he had last season with S3 Motorsports. The Federated Auto Parts Chevy Impala has a 46.872 for lap one. Don't forget Smith, he was in contention for the win on the last lap a season ago before he was out dueled by Lane Sanders, Zachary DeLello, and Charles Sanford, and he fell to fourth at the finish. Right now, his teammates of Montgomery, Dagby, and Srigley, fourth, sixth, and eleventh respectively, but this is the last chance for anyone to knock Zachary Belson off the top of the speed board. So what will be the time for the driver of the 24? A 46-428. It will not be enough. That officially means Zachary Belson and the number 13 pole position racing team will officially be on pole position for round one here at Daytona. And joining alongside him on the front row is Lucas Catano in the number 20 for Martin Motorsports. So those two drivers' front row positions will officially be locked in. That time by TJ Smith will put him in 16th between Yoshiko Sakamoto and Luke Martin. So he's going to have a dual two starting position for sure. But folks, that's it. Pole qualifying is officially wrapped up here from Daytona. Zachary Bilson, Lucas Catano, should they not get their cars trashed up on Thursday, they will retain their front row starting positions for Sunday's big race. So with all 45 cars being run, 
We'll now focus on to Thursday for the twin dual races. 40 laps each, 100 miles. Everyone who qualified on the inside row, everyone who qualified on inside row positions will line up in the first duel, such as Bilson, Pericles, and Freeze, while drivers who qualified on the outside row positions will line up for duel number two, such as Catano, Montgomery, and Dagby. So one final time, ladies and gents, thank you very much for tuning in to this qualifying video. We hope the rest of the racing action satisfies your thrills for speed. And we hope to catch you back again on Thursday for more intense racing action from the World Center of Racing. One final time, congratulations to Zachary Bilson on being your pole setter for round number one.